Today we are going to talk about the second session of skin cancers, about malignant melanoma. So malignant melanoma is a malignant tumor arising from epidermal melanocytes. It is the most aggressive cutaneous malignant tumor. It accounts for 5% of all cutaneous malignancies. It usually arises in a pre-existing pigmented nevus, but it may arise de novo as well. The common sites, 25% cases seen in head and neck, trunk 25%, lower limb 25%, upper limb 11% and other sites like the eyes, anorectal region, penis at 14%. The predisposing factors, exposure to ultraviolet light, more common in white skinned individuals, genetic cancer syndromes like seroderma pigmentosa, pre-existing pigmented nevi like junctional nevus, compound nevus, Hutchinson's lentigo and a few other varieties as well, history of previous skin cancer, family history of malignant melanoma, a familial dysplastic nevus syndrome. All of this increase the risk of developing malignant melanoma later in life. Now regarding the pathology, there are four uh, types that have been described. You have the lentico maligna melanoma, acral lentiginous melanoma, superficial spreading melanoma, and the nodular melanoma. Lentico maligna melanoma is the least malignant and the least com and less and is less common it occurs in the elderly age group and is more seen on the sun exposed areas like face neck and hands it presents as slow growing variegated brown macule or lentigo now acral lentiginous melanoma it is a least common and has poor prognosis it occurs in the distal extremities such as the palms, soles, and the subungal region. Superficial spreading melanoma, it is the most common type of malignant melanoma. It can occur in any part of the body. It commonly arises from a pre-existing nevus and is more common in the back in men and in the legs in women. Nodular melanoma, it is the most malignant type and has poor prognosis. It can occur in any part of the body but is common in the head and neck and trunk region. It's common in younger age and in men. So saying this, you can see the pictures now. You have the superficial spreading melanoma, nodular melanoma, lentigo maligna melanoma, and the acral lentiginous melanoma. Now some consider the subungal variety as a separate entity as well as there is something known as the ermelanotic melanoma which is not having any pigment. So these varieties are also there. I have described the four common types. Now the Clark's level of invasion. According to Clark, there is an initial radial growth phase which occurs horizontally along the dermoepidermal junction and later the vertical growth phase occurs. And during the vertical growth phase there is invasion and, in, and metastatic capabilities. So there is usually a flattened growth and then there is a vertical growth. So level 1 means up to the epidermis. Level 2 extends into the papillary dermis. Level 3 extends into the papillary dermis completely. So level 2 and 3 are basically entry and entry into the papillary dermis. Level 4 means it extends beyond into the reticular dermis. And level 5 it involves the subcutaneous tissue. So you can see here, this is the epidermis, this is the papillary dermis, this white wavy area, this is the reticular dermis, the pink shade, and this is the, sorry, this is the papillary dermis and this is the reticular dermis here, the huge area over here. So level 1 means only the epidermis is involved, level 2 means you involve the superficial part of the papillary dermis, level 3 the deeper part of the papillary dermis, up to the junction of the reticular dermis. Level 4 means you have entered the reticular dermis. And level 5, it has gone beyond the dermis up to the subcutaneous tissue. 
now breast loss classification this is a, another way to look at the thickness of invasion and it's a very important prognostic indicator in the case of localized melanoma so it has got four stages stage 1 the thickness up to 0.75 mm stage 2 0.75 to 1.5 mm stage 3 1.5 to 4 mm and stage 4 is more than 4 mm so this picture shows both the clark's level and the press level the lesions you have to look carefully you can see the five lesions over here and the thickness is from the superficial area breast loss thickness 0 0.75 0 0.75 to 1.5 1.51 1 to 4 and more than 4 now regarding the spread so there is local spread is initially by local extension and it may also form satellite nodules in the skin within 2 cm of the primary lesion so in addition to one lesion you may have small other other small lesions next to the primary within 2 cm now lymphatic spread it's a commonest form of spread it occurs by embolization or by permeation to the regional lymph nodes so just like squamous cell, squamous cell carcinoma malignant melanoma also has lymphatic spread now here the difference comes there may be lesions that is known as in transit nodules between the primary and the regional lymph nodes now this has to be differentiated from satellite nodules so satellite nodules are within 2 cm of the primary and the rest of the region may be known as in transit nodules now the third element just like squamous cell carcinoma you have the blood spread it is a late event and can occur to lungs liver brain skin and bones so that it occurs later or in the advanced stage of the disease clinical features malignant melanoma can occur at any age but is more common after 40 years of age it usually occurs in a pre-existing nevus but it can also occur de novo in normal skin it presents as a brown to black lesion at any part of the body like palms soles head and neck mucocutaneous junctions like mouth anus and also in the eyes in the ermelanotic melanoma variant the lesion is slightly pinkish in color and does not have the typical brown to black color now the symptoms of malignant transformation in a pre-existing nevus include a change in size change in shape change in color presence of bleeding itching or ulceration appearance of a halo around the lesion and the presence of or appearance of satellite nodules around the lesion all these suggest malignant transformation into a malignant melanoma now usually the lesion in the case of the lesion the surface is irregular with small ulcers and crusts and bleeding from the surface the halo or satellite lesions may be seen in the surrounding skin regional lymph nodes are usually enlarged so this is how a malignant melanoma looks like you can see the lesion so the difference is between benign and malignant so benign has got a symmetrical appearance while malignant is more of an irregular or asymmetrical appearance the borders are even and the borders are uneven the color is slightly brownish while there is a variation of color or uh, darker shades or blacker shades are also seen the size is usually less than 6 mm for benign and more than 6 mm may suggest malignant and this is an ordinary mole and this is a irregular shaped mole with all the change in size shape color and superficial surface so the investigation just like any skin lesion biopsy so if it's a small lesion you can go for an excision biopsy or else you go for a wedge biopsy now there are tumor markers which are positive in malignant melanoma the s100 hmb45 milan a and ldh now when the lymph nodes are enlarged you can go ahead for an fnac of the lymph node now malignant melanoma is one of those conditions where you can look for the sentinel lymph node biopsy and a lymphatic uh, you can say tracing or lymphocentigraphy where you can trace the drainage into the first node of the regional lymph nodes which is likely to have the malignant melanoma 
should the lymph nodes be involved so central lymph node biopsy is that technique now for further evaluation you can look for ultrasound of the area or mri of the area for looking at the local invasion of the lesion as well as for the lymph node region assessment now metastatic workup in the case of blood spread chest x-ray or a ct chest a bone scan an mri of the brain to look for uh, brain metastasis ultrasound abdomen for liver metastasis and ultrasound of the regional lymph node for lymphatic involvement assessment differential diagnosis you can have a pigmented basal cell carcinoma pigmented squamous cell carcinoma pyogenic granuloma kaposi sarcoma keratoacanthoma cutaneous angiosarcoma nevus solar keratosis so, uh, 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 these are the common differential diagnosis now the treatment surgery is the main treatment wide local excision with clearance of margin and depth followed by either primary closure or skin grafting or flap cover now depending on the depth if the depth is less than 1 mm can just give a half centimeter clearance if it is 1 to 2 mm you have to go for 1 centimeter 2 centimeter clearance and 2 to 4 mm or more than 4 mm you consider at least 2 centimeter clearance just like squamous cell carcinoma now malignant melanoma unlike basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma is not a radio sensitive tumor hence there is not much role for radiotherapy in the case of involvement of finger toe or toe you can go for amputation of of the finger or the toe in the case of anal canal an apr resection or an abdo abdomino perineal resection is done in case of eye can uh, do an enucleation of the uh, affected eye is done now for the lymph node involvement uh, you can do a lymphosintigraphy or lymphatic mapping and then do a central node biopsy to see if the lymph nodes are having melanoma deposits and if it is having can proceed with a regional block resection in the case of fixed lymph nodes chemotherapy can be done now post surgery if there is recurrence and if the lesion appears within 5 cm of the primary site you can attempt isolated limb perfusion using melphalan or you can also go for isolated limb infusion now in the case of distant spread or metastatic spread then uh, a number of therapies are available chemotherapy immunotherapy targeted therapy and radiotherapy as well so radiotherapy's role is limited to metastasis of the bone and the brain chemotherapy decabesin is the only drug or dtic which is approved or by the fda for chemotherapy for malignant melanoma alternatively immunotherapy or a combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy uh, with either drugs like ipilimumab or alpha interferon similarly you have targeted therapy depending on the genetic mutations if they are positive you can try drugs like dabrafenib vemurafenib it is not done unless the genetic factors are positive in the patient for isolated lung or liver metastasis a resection can be done so this is the extent of treatment for malignant melanoma thank you